Hello and welcome everyone. This is Desi and I'm back to talk about a show that I've been watching for a while now called Yellowstone. I've watched a lot with my parents who are in their late 60s. My mom is and my dad's in his early 70s. And I've watched a bit of it on my own. And I've watched a bit of the reviews online and I wanted to do a character tier list. So without further ado, the rating system I'm going to base largely on two of, or one of my favorite series of all time, which is The Sopranos, and my least favorite, not my least favorite series, but my least favorite season of a series that was once really good, Game of Thrones, and then I'm going to refer to Game of Thrones Season 8 as the D or bottom tier. And I have about 20 characters from the show here. I left a few out intentionally, and I also added some minor characters just that I felt strongly about. So let's get started. The first character on our list is John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner. I actually really like this character, which is not surprising. He is the main character of the series. He gets the most screen time. And he is very well acted. He is a very strong character. Very sort of man's man type of character, but also with the sensitive side. He runs this large ranch. Oh, by the way, spoiler warning, duh. I'm going to be spoiling all the way through, halfway through season five. I actually haven't watched the entire series. I'm two episodes from finishing the eighth episode. I'm on season five, episode six, but I've watched enough of it where I have a pretty strong grasp of all these characters. But anyway, back to John Dutton. I'm going to put him in A tier. He is a very solid character. He's well acted. He is well written. He plays his part well and doesn't have a lot of inconsistencies. Entertaining to watch. Always a pleasure when he's on the screen. So, A tier for him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this next character, <laughs> a lot of people love her and a lot of people hate her. I am one of the few, or I guess I am one of the many who am not terribly fond of her, but I don't think she's bad. Sometimes she is A tier, and sometimes she is freaking Game of Thrones Season 8 tier, <laughs> her D tier. I'm going to put her in C just because she pisses me off so much, and like I... <sighs> I feel like the show doesn't know what to do with Beth sometimes. Like, what is she supposed to do? Is she supposed to be a farm girl? Is she supposed to be, like, this corporate powerhouse? She's the business savvy person of the family. But she's also, like, vindictive, completely unforgiving, and can act like a spoiled brat sometimes. Um, she is entertaining. But I'm just going to put her in C because I'm just not terribly fond of her. <laughs> Don't hate me for that. Uh, next character is Jamie Dutton, who, as a person, I think he's despicable. He's very sympathetic, I think, in the early seasons, but he just becomes more and more of a pile of human trash. But every time he's on screen, there's always some drama and BS. He's very well acted. And he doesn't really piss me off that much like Beth does. He just is, he, you know, he's a rep, he's um, kind of a reprobate. And you know he's kind of a piece of garbage, especially as the season goes on. He's untrustworthy. And you can blame a, that, a lot of that on his family and on John. But at the same time, he just makes some really questionable decisions and is kind of sketchy. So just for entertainment value and just how well-written he is, I'm going to put him in A. A lot of people are going to hate me for putting him above Beth, but Jamie, to me, is just more entertaining. I might move Beth to B. I don't know. I've actually did this before. I've done this tier list before, so we'll see. Okay, now on to Casey. Casey is the second son of the family. He is ex-military. 
I think he is extremely attractive. <laughs> In terms of physical attractiveness, he is S tier, Sopranos tier. But I'm going to put him in B tier just because, yes, I enjoy watching KC. He's a well-written character. Well, he's somewhat well-written. I just, he's just not that compelling for me. He has some really good fight scenes. He has these, you know, shootout scenes. And I just think in the early seasons, he's kind of just not that well rounded out or fleshed out. I feel like he gets better, but it's just... He has the vision quest thing, which is pretty good. But I'm just not, I don't feel that strongly about him. So I'm going to put him in B. Like, he's good, but he's not great. He doesn't piss me off like Beth does, but he doesn't also overwhelm me. So, okay. Now comes Rip, who, in my opinion, is extremely talented actor. I wouldn't say he's underrated. I would say he's probably the main character other than Kevin Costner, maybe Beth. But I freaking love this character. He is the perfect cowboy. At the same time, he's not just this total one-dimensional character. There's multiple sides to Rip. He has a very sensitive, soft, and sweet side. But he's also like a total badass at times. He's not an asshole. He can be very reasonable, but at the same time, he can really put his foot down on things, end fights, get in fights. He's extremely tough and durable. He's been through a lot. He's been shot. He's been stabbed. He's been beat up. And he always gets back up and just extremely level-headed and takes care of the farm. He's also like the undertaker. Whenever there's a problem, rip, you go to rip. Rip takes care of everything. Very soft spoken, you know, walk or you know, speak softly, carry a big stick sort of character. I adore him. I'm putting him in Sopranos tier. He is amazing and he belongs up there. Fight me if you disagree. Okay, now on to Monica. Um, I just don't feel that strongly about this character, she doesn't piss me off. But she also really just doesn't inspire anything. When I see her on screen, I'm just like, oh, okay, it's another Monica thing. And she's just not that interesting. And I don't know if it's an acting thing. I don't know if it's screenwriting. But she just doesn't inspire any sort of emotion or feeling when she's on screen. And I got to put her in C tier. I'm putting... I, I'm really considering moving Beth up. Because when Beth is on screen... I know there's some stuff that's going to happen, but a lot of Beth's stuff is just stupid crap that I hate. So that's why she's in C tier. Beth can be A tier at times, or she can be Game of Thrones season 8 tier, as I've said before. Okay, and now we move on to Malcolm Beck, who is, I believe, in season 3. Season 2, season 3. He is a main villain. This actor was in a lot of other movies, so he's one of those higher tier list actors. He does a very good job being a villain. That's why he's in there, even though he's not in the later seasons. And he is a great villain. You're afraid of him. He's dangerous. He gets law enforcement on his side at one point. He's hard to take down. He's an existential threat to the farm. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in B tier. All right, and now we move on to let me see I got I got everybody over the bunkhouse group I didn't put all of them in there because a lot of them are short on screen time but we're gonna start with Jimmy Jimmy has a very good character arc in my opinion he starts off as this basically a loser I would say completely inept at being on the farm can't do the most basic tasks loses his hat loses his horse his, constantly getting made fun of. Rip is just constantly talking down to him. Well, not talking down to him, but like, hey, Jimmy, you're a dumbass. Like, get your stuff together. Like, figure it out, dude. And Jimmy eventually progresses from a complete inept buffoon to a bona fide cowboy, especially when he gets sent down to Texas to go to the 4-6's ranch. 
I actually wish they would have done more on Jimmy. It just seems like Jimmy's down there for 20 minutes and then he comes back a cowboy. But, I mean, I get it. There's there's screen time limitations. But Jimmy is a good character. I enjoy his character growth. Very very well written, very well acted. Um, actually, one of the few romances I like in this is not the one we had with the barrel racer in the earlier seasons, but the later romance he had with the girl in Texas who I think worked for a veterinarian. That, in my opinion, was a pretty solid uh, relationship that was healthy for both of them. So I'm going to give him a B. Put him an upper B. I, I enjoy Jimmy. I enjoy his arc. Now, Mr. Lloyd. Um, old cowboy, tough as nails. He's Rip's best friend. I enjoy Lloyd. However, he would be a B tier. But he gets into this relationship with a girl that is like 20 years younger than him and then gets pissed off when he wonders why it doesn't work out. Like, I just, maybe it's just because of the fact that I'm an ace, but I just hate these stupid romances and these stupid freaking tr love triangles and like, okay, dude, you're in your late 50s and you're wondering why this 20-something-year-old dumped you for somebody younger. And it's just... He he is a total juvenile bastard about it, too. Like, he gets pissed off. He gets in a fight with this guy. And I hate it. <laughs> and for that reason, because he pissed me off so much, I'm putting him in C tier. Other than that, he's pretty solid he's okay he's just the old kind of old cowboy and rip's best friend or whatever but he just acts like a child and it's annoying and i'm putting him in c tier walker is the person involved in the love, tri love triangle he is a young handsome musician and he's has issues with yellowstone and how they basically do things with beating people up and all the crap that Yellowstone Ranch is involved with. He has issues with it. He leaves Yellowstone for a while. Casey saves him. And then he comes back. Rip can't stand him. And eventually they start to mend their relationship. And then, of course, Lloyd and Walker get in this huge feud about this girl. And it's stupid as hell. And other than that, I think Walker's a pretty good character. But again, like, I just, I wish, like, this show is so good in so many ways, but it has these stupid love triangles that I can't freaking stand. Like, the only relationship I like, really, that's mainstream is between Rip and Beth, because they complement and contrast each other. I really, I, I'm so tempted to move. I'm going to put her at top of C. Maybe I'll move, move her to bottom of B later, but Beth just pisses me off. Anyways, moving on to Senator Lynette. I don't know what her last name is. I wrote it down somewhere, but whatever. Recurring character. Um, she is the governor before John takes over. She is connected. She represents um, sort of the corporate polit political world of Montana. And I think she's fairly well written. She has a romance with John. More like a fling, I guess. They're not really connected. But I enjoy her character, so I'm going to put her in B. All right. Now, Rainwater, who is the... I can't... I keep forgetting his official title. He's like the top councilman for the tribe of Native Americans um, in the show. And he's like the face of the Native Americans. Very complex character. On the one hand, he wants what's best for his people. He is actively involved and is into tra tradition, does the traditional things, but at the same time, he is also fairly greedy. He wants to line his pockets, and he is, I wouldn't say corrupt, but a little bit dubious. 
And I actually enjoy him quite a bit, and I'm going to put him in high B tier. Uh, the next character is Mo. He is a minor character, doesn't get a whole lot of screen time, but every time he's on screen, it's good. He is like the right-hand man, chief lieutenant of tribal police to Rainwater. And I just think I love his kind of calm, collected demeanor. He actually has several interactions with Rip. And he's fun to watch. They're dynamic, very kind, thoughtful individual. But at the same time, he's a skilled, like, warrior and armsman. He's basically gets involved in one of the shootouts. And you wouldn't think it, you know just on his look and his demeanor, but he's actually like an extremely competent fighter and killer. So a very well-rounded character and kind of offsets and counteracts Rainwater. So kind of the yin and the yang of the more traditional Native American First Nation representation compared to Rainwater, who is sort of in between the corporate world and the traditional world. So... Very well-written character. I'm going to put him in B tier. Okay, now for uh, my favorite. A lot of people hate this woman. What, I'm, I need to remember what her name was. Angela Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder. Let's call her Blue Thunder. She is a lawyer from what I believe. Extremely dubious, morally gray character. Every time she's on screen, especially when I'm watching with my parents, like it's just like, oh my gosh, what is she up to? What is she doing? You don't know which side she's on. Like Rainwater and Mo are super like wary of her, and she's almost kind of reminds me like a snake in the grass. You don't know what, who, or where she's gonna bite if you're gonna step on her or what. And she even gets more and more dubious and more and more enraged, and fiendish almost is the word I would use for her in later seasons and every time she's on screen like everyone gets quiet whoever I'm watching it with so she's A tier absolutely Blue Thunder A tier she gets a lot of screen time later on she's not like up there with the with Jamie and John in terms of screen time as much screen time but when she's on screen she completely takes your breath away so A tier for her and now we go to some more uh, antagonists. Ellis Steele, I believe this is what his name is. Or Saint Ellis or whatever. He is like the principal agent for Market Equities, who this company is trying to take over this land in Montana, take over a chunk of the Dutton land, put an airport and a resort there. And he's like their main representative. And he is just this pompous, arrogant, completely detestable character but that is a testament to his acting skill you know what if i'm gonna put him he doesn't really piss me off though he just is like oh my gosh this guy is such a he is such a <laughs> he's such an a-hole and such a prick um very full of himself i'm gonna put him high b tier like he doesn't get a whole lot of screen time but when he's on screen, you're just like, this guy is a, a freaking, he is a, he is like your stereotypical, he needs like a, a little twirly mustache or whatever, I think, to complete the ensemble, like a snidely witch lip lash type, I guess, I don't know. But yes, uh, very, you love to hate him. So for that reason, he goes in B tier. Uh, Carolyn the CEO of Market Equities, or somebody who's very high up. I think Carolyn Warner is her name. Um, very short in stature, but a big personality. Comes in the later seasons after the first drama. Basically comes in to clean up the mess that was started. Comes in after Ellis. And initially you're like, oh my gosh, this woman is so, she's this powerful woman figure. She even says in the show, like she is, she was coming up when there was a really a glass ceiling and she managed to connive and manipulate her way to the top. 
having to compete against men in a world that was geared towards men. So in that way, you're like, oh, okay, you know, this is a compelling character. But at the same time, Beth just completely, you know, I'm going to move Beth up because I'm talking about this now. And I actually did this tier list earlier. I kept her in C. But I'm going to move Beth up bottom of B because Beth really does do a good job of outwitting people in the corporate world and she's like a good balance of the farm and corporate world I, I, again I don't feel like the show knows what to do, quite to do with her but this interaction with Beth and Carolyn Warner where Beth lets outwits her outsmarts her almost at every turn and then lays the coup de gras at the end of season four early season five that completely screws Carolyn Warner's career it's pretty good. And that's why I'm moving about that. But I'm going to put Carolyn Warner in C because, like, she had all this potential. You know, she's been through all these mergers and acquisitions or whatever. And in the corporate world, she's supposed to be, like, this corporate overlord, this mastermind. And Beth just completely outwits her at every turn, almost. So I'm going to put her in C tier. Just a very disappointing uh, end. Now, the one thing Carolyn does at the end is she enlists the aid of Sarah Atwood, who is like this corporate assassin. And when Sarah Atwood, they only referenced her in the earlier seasons. And Sarah Atwood, I thought was going to be, you know, try like to do some business dealings, try to manipulate Beth and try to really stir up drama in, you know, a tactical sort of way, a cerebral sort of way, and instead she just seduces Jamie. And it, and Jamie's just such a, a, a freaking wreck and pile of garbage human being that he doesn't even realize that he's being seduced. And it's really stupid and I hate it and I'm going to put her in D tier. <laughs> Nothing against the actress. Well, the actress, you know, even that, like the way the actress is written, she's just like this smarmy. I mean, it's just like, how does Jamie not see that this woman has nothing good? It's just like he, Jamie's just such like a, a, a glutton for any sort of affection or any anybody who will show him any sort of affection that he'll just completely lose his wits when he, when anybody shows him affection or love or lust. And it's just stupid, and I hate it, and she's going in D. Or Game of Thrones Season 8. <laughs> I should. <laughs> there really isn't really any true F tiers. Uh, Summer Higgins um, starts out as this protester. She gets into an altercation. Casey comes to break it up. In fact, I'm going to move these over a little bit. Casey, I'm biased towards because I think he's extremely attractive, but that's another story. Um, that's just bias. And then Summer Higgins talks to John, and John like imparts his cowboy wisdom and his love of the land and surprises her. And despite Summer Higgins supposedly being like 20 plus years younger than him, they like sleep with each other. John, old man John, and Summer. And it's a stupid romance, and I hate it. And she's this vegan, environmentalist type, protester type. And she and John end up in a relationship, and it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense plot-wise. It's like one of my least favorite parts of the show. It's one of these things, these stupid romances... That doesn't make any sense. And then her and Beth get in a fight about like, because she's at the Dutton Ranch and she's like, oh, I don't like meat. And it's nothing against vegans. I respect vegans and I respect what they do. But it's just like, you're at a freaking ranch with a bunch of, like with Beth and her family. And you're complaining that they eat meat and they, they're cattle ranchers. It's like, hello? Like, why? She's one of these, she's like a piece of a puzzle that's in a in a puzzle box the wrong type of puzzle she's the wrong piece of a puzzle in the wrong puzzle box she just i don't feel like she fits on the show 
doesn't make any sense. And like her relationship with John is stupid as hell. And she's going in season eight Game of Thrones tier. Okay, now for some more minor characters. Teeter. Uh, Teeter comes, I think, in season three. And she is just this... She has this super thick accent. She's entertaining to watch. She's hilarious. She fits right in with all the cowboys in the bunkhouse. She has good relationships with all of them. Like, she does her job. Extremely competent. Hilarious. And she gets more and more screen time as time goes on. And I love every minute of her. And I'm going to put her in A tier. I don't care what anybody says. I freaking love Teeter. And the actress that plays her, I believe, is the daughter of one of the people in Little House on the Prairie. And, like, when you look at the actress and you look at Teeter, they're two completely different people. So this is a transformation on the actress's part to Teeter. And just the af not only the accent, the affectation, but just the way she carries herself. Wonderful. So I believe she belongs in A tier. Okay, and now for one of the more controversial characters. Clara, who is John's assistant and events coordinator, once essentially he becomes governor. And as soon as he becomes governor, it's like you see the bureaucratic mess that Montana is. And how John has to sort through it. And this is like season 4, season 5 stuff. Especially season 5. Of John having to really kind of cut the red tape and deal with all the bull crap that goes on. And Clara is his right hand person. She always is offering him sound advice. She is one of the few people that is honest and competent. And gives him good advice. And I really enjoy her screen time. And there's a cattle branding. And Claire's like, you have all these meetings, Governor, and you can't just go off on the ranch for like a month and a half. And he's like, well, you know, this is what I have to do. I'm a rancher, even though I'm governor. Like, I need to do this. She's like, okay, well, if, you're gonna, if we're going to do this, you have all these meetings that people want to see you. So let's coordinate an event where we turn it as, essentially into a publicity stunt or whatever. She uses all the terminology well. She doesn't get a whole... She actually gets... She's always next... She's like right next to John. She's his side hand person. His assistant, but at the same time, sort of like his PR manager. She plays an extremely important role. And I hadn't really seen this actress until she showed up in this show. And... I really like Clara. And I'm going to put her in high B tier. I think if the show goes to an, another season and she gets more screen time, I don't know. Like I'm just putting her in B team for right now. And she knows how to ride a horse too. So she fits in every she fits so well into the show and she came out of nowhere. So she's wonderful. Now there was I have like I said I have not watched the last two episodes of season five. Or season six and or seven and eight, and apparently there was an episode where it was she was like in the background and she was with her partner in real life, which happens to be a non-binary person, and they kissed. And this is one of a few moments in the show where there's queer representation because they're both queer. I did not know that Clara's character. In the show, actually, in real life, was queer until I found out about this like 20 minutes before I made this video, which personally makes me delighted because I love it when shows have queer representation because it hasn't been there in the past. So I was overjoyed, but apparently, a bunch of the boomers and like conservatives and people got mad about it, which to me doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, I don't know why they care. But that just makes me even more positively inclined towards the show, personally, because I'm a part of that community. And 
representation like that makes me very happy, and especially for a show that I've watched so much to and invested so much time into. So kudos for the producers for putting that in there. And it wasn't even supposed to be that big of a deal, but the boomers and the reds got so mad when that happened because, oh, you ruined the show by having two queer people kiss each other. Like, I don't know what to say to that other than <laughs> get a life. Okay. And now to the next person, who is Sheriff Donnie, I believe is his name? Uh, yes. And this is a character that is in like all the way up to season four, I believe, midway through, partway through it. He is the sheriff. Him and John are constantly dealing with one another for one thing or another. John is extremely dubious. He's extremely corrupt. And after his death, you learn that he was also like a, a drunken piece of crap, essentially. But I, I, I think really in the early seasons, he, his interaction with John, his interactions with Rip, because Rip was constantly getting in trouble in the early seasons, and their interactions really, um, I think, carried the show and is sort of, uh, I would call it its weaker time. So for that reason, I'm going to put John, or uh, Sheriff Donnie, I believe his name, in B tier. And now for the show overall. I believe that Yellowstone started off pretty weak in C tier. I'm not going to put it in D tier, because nothing as bad as Game of Thrones Season 8. And then it progressively got better and better and better. And I would say the latter seasons were between A and B, season four and or uh, yeah, season four and five. It got really good. Um, the only thing I think holding it back is these stupid romances. Like every single romance outside of Beth and uh, Rip. I forgot I moved Beth up. Beth, uh, you know, in hindsight, Beth does belong in B tier as much as she pisses me off. Bottom of B tier. But I would say the show overall gets a B. Uh, it's solid. I enjoy it. I would say its strong points are the cinematography, the stellar acting by Kevin Costner, uh, the guy who plays Rip. I keep forgetting his name. Jamie, you know, the main characters. Beth does play a really good role. Uh, things holding it back, I would say, are some of the some of the writing, especially in the earlier seasons. I just didn't particularly care for it. Um, for me, being a queer person, this show seems like, on face value, is very much orientated towards sort of a conservative, older generation of audiences, and there are plenty of that demographic who watch it, which is why. When the scene with Clara and her partner on the show happened, a bunch of people flipped out. I would say that about 70% of the viewers would be on the conservative side of the spectrum, which the show does appeal to them. But for me, not being on that side of the spectrum, I'd actually have queer representation. And not only that, but First Nations, First Nations representation. Uh, the First Nations are given a lot of screen time and their issues are brought up cons consistently. John does not have really an antagonistic relationship. Rip has a really good relationship with Mo. I love seeing these two interact with each other, even though they're on two separate sides of the spectrum. And Rainwater and John Dutton's rea or, uh, interactions are really good. And it really does show a lot of the plight that the Native Americans First Nations are going through. And I respect them for putting that in there. It's not perfect representation by any means. But yeah, overall, it's a good show. I sometimes feel like it doesn't know what its target audience is. It doesn't know what to do with the romances. But the writing has gotten better and better. And I think it's fair to say that the show is at B tier. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.